Hello everybody. I want to show you how to um, make a, a good connection to a slingshot fork uh, for the case of having a single tube. And here's the example that uh, I'll be showing you how to put together. We have 1745 uh, tubing and you notice this uh, sleeve of green sleeve. Uh, uh, this is protective tubing. It's actually a green thera tube. Um, and uh, uh, having this protective tubing here allows you to go over 800 shots without any uh, uh, band failure. Uh, there's two parts of this protective uh, aspect. One is that instead of the rough wood, uh, we, we have the, the green tubing uh, so that the uh, uh, 1745 tubing here is not rubbing against the wood. The other aspect of protection is that the uh, green sleeve extends out uh, away so that when you do the shooting and the uh, pouch is coming through, the green tubing will bend over and continue to protect the uh, 1745 tubing, uh, preventing it from hitting the fork wood. So let's show you how to make this and what's involved. Let me take this apart. and you see you have two sleeves. You might be able to just barely see that there's kind of a bulge in the green here. That bulge keeps the assembly from pulling through that slot in the fork. And the bulge is caused by a knot in the 1745 tubing that is pulled inside the green. So we'll show you how to make this. We'll start with some um, 1745 tubing and I cut off a generous 12-inch uh, length. That's probably a couple inches more than we need, but let's just make it easy for the first time. And uh, first we're going to uh, tie this special knot that's going to be anchored within the, the, the green sleeve. So uh, the knot is made, uh, you do the first half of a square knot, which looks about like that, uh, but then we go through one more time, so it looks like that, and then we start pulling it together tight. Uh, you kind of do it gradually. You pull a little tighter, and then you try to bring it down to the end more. Uh, oops, I lost it. I'll do it again. Half a square knot, one more time through. Start to tighten it. Um, I want to bring it down toward the end of the tubing just so we don't waste all that extra stuff. Uh, I cut the tube extra long this time so we won't have a problem in any case, but uh, in general you'll probably be wanting to tighten it like that. Okay, so uh, I just... Okay, that's probably good enough. Okay, so we've got the knot and you can slip the, the sleeve over it and it pulls down pretty easily. Uh, you want this knot to be embedded in the, in the green. Uh, so you want it to be... There's a bulge there now. I don't know if you can see it. It's a little hard to see, but the bulge is kind of right there. And that will prevent the, uh, this assembly from sliding through the fork. Uh, because of the, the bulge will, will prevent that. Um, okay, before I put this on though, I actually want to do a measurement. Uh, be, uh, so I want to make a six and a half inch active length in this band. So what I'm going to do is measure out six and a half inches from the, uh, from the side of the knot along the string. And then I'll mark that. So, six and a half inches would be right about there. And I'm going to um, make this all the way around just to make sure I can see it. Okay. Uh, now I'll show you how I, I attach this to. Uh, uh, the pouch. Uh, there's lots of ways of doing this and you can do it your own way but this will just take a second so I'll show it to you. Uh, okay. First of all we have a length of string that's uh, been tied together to make a loop 
and I'm going to attach one end of it along uh, the top of a C clamp and I'm going to loop this through the uh, pouch, one end of the pouch. I'm going to come back around this there and I've located this uh, little portable vise that's used for a drill press uh, in about the right position and I'm going to be tying that uh, uh, that uh, band assembly we just made, that fork. So let's see, here's that band assembly we made. Uh, let's stick on this guy. And there it is. Uh, okay, uh, we're going to use a constrictor knot. It works easier if you just go ahead and stick this on the pouch first. So I'm folding the pouch a little bit to help get it on there. And uh, stick this through. And I've got my mark here somewhere. A little hard to see, but uh, I see it. And uh, I don't know if you'll be able to see this in the camera, but what I see is I start with a blue marker and it leaves kind of a purplish looking stripe. And I usually line that right with the edge of the hole. Uh, and that leads to at least consistent uh, tying. Okay, then what I'm going to do is um, the loose end of one of these sides I'm going to put in this vise. Uh, tighten that and slide the stuff down to where the tube is. And uh, you notice that with this tying technique, uh, I'm holding on to the rubber with my bare hand, so there's no scratching or cutting into the tube to worry about. And also it makes it easy to control how tight uh, I want to pull on the band. I usually only use a pretty modest pull, uh, and similarly when I tighten, I pull it against the pad, against the um, pouch and kind of only modestly tighten, like that. Uh, and the reason for that is um, it uh, seems to make this pouch tie uh, you have a lot better wear than if, you, than if you get too tight with it. I'll oftentimes augment this tie with a second one that's just the same, but uh, we'll just skip that for now. Okay. Um, so, uh, then the second, uh, other half of the uh, uh, pouch is tied the same way. Uh, I'm not going to do it here for you, but I've got another band. And we can imagine sticking my little loop through again. And putting a string here to, with a pre-tied constrictor knot going. And I again would find the right mark, tie it put the loose end in the vise, uh, tie it, tighten it, and be done. Okay, there's a couple other things I want to say. Um, uh, one is about the uh, 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 fork width. Uh, the fork width. Uh, the, experimentally, I think I found that the, the a good choice for the uh, fork uh, uh, slot opening is about 57% of the total rubber thickness. Uh, what does that mean? Okay, for 1745, uh, that means that the outer diameter is four and a half millimeters. The inside diameter is uh, 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 1.7 millimeters. And the difference uh, would be 2.8 millimeters. That, that ends up meaning that the uh, rubber width on this is the difference of the outside and inside diameters. Which would this be? Would that be 2.8 millimeters, or about a tenth of an inch? Now, for the for the the green Theratube sleeves, the inside diameter is two tenths of an inch. The outside diameter is about 0.35 inch. So that means the the inner outer diameter difference is is 0.15 inch. So the total total of thicknesses of the rubber then is the 0.15 plus 0.1, or a total of a quarter inch. And I said use 57% of that for the target for the slot width. 
uh, and that uh, comes out to be about 0.142 inches. Now, how do you how do you control a slot with uh, a, with any kind of precision? Uh, I'll show you how to do that. I cut my slots with a uh, jigsaw, and the jigsaw itself has a uh, kerf loss of about a sixteenth of an inch, which is not big enough to uh, hit the targeted uh, uh, slot with the 0.142 inch. Anyway, so what you would do, let's say we're, we're uh, sawing uh, with a jigsaw coming in this way and using a guide. Uh, this would be the, the straight edge guide. And we put this, this down where we think we want it to be to, to start that, that first cut. And then what we would do is we would clamp some other pieces against while well, while the guide is clamped down we would have separate uh, clamps on these two uh, uh, other pieces that end up marking where where uh, where the straight edge clamp is positioned so we could for instance then remove the straight edge clamp and put it back against there and clamp it down again uh, so what you do is the first for the first cut with a saw, you come across using the straight edge and these these uh, uh, mark that the straight edge that's anchored by uh, these clamped down pieces. But then for the second cut, you can put a spacer in, and then uh, make a new saw cut, and then uh, you clamp this down at the new position. And then the new saw cut is automatically adds the spacer thickness uh, to the previous uh, cut width. So by doing that, you can get a controllable slot width. Uh, one possibility for, for these little spacers is to use uh, playing cards. Uh, a deck of playing cards is usually around six tenths of an inch thick. There's 52 of them in it, uh, and that comes out to be uh, each card being about zero. 0.011 inches thick. So you could choose a certain number of playing cards and, and get your, uh, your uh, uh, slot width just right. Okay, I want to say a few final things about um, uh, this um, uh, band assembly that we did. After you've put it together, like that. Uh, you can pull on it and it's not going to go anywhere. You can pull on the green or you can pull on the black. It's not going to go anywhere. Uh, you would probably cut uh, this end off to maybe a quarter inch or so uh, outside of the green. Uh, you don't want to cut it all the way to the green because if you ever wanted to reposition uh, the sleeve you need to be able to grab onto the, the inside tube some way and if it was stuck inside there you wouldn't be able to grab onto it. The other important thing about this green sleeve, as I mentioned it before, is uh, it's got to be long enough on, on the pouch side, uh, that's, that's this length here I'm saying, so that when you shoot, uh, this tube is protected against the wood of the fork. Uh, so right now this, this green is, is, is plenty long enough to do that. Uh, and uh, we... Uh, we probably wouldn't have needed it to be that long. We could have probably made it uh, almost a quarter inch shorter. Uh, and we can kind of remedy that a little bit if you want. We could just pull it down a little bit more and stick it back in. Trying to stick it back in. There we go. Oops. It was on the wrong side. the knot. So, uh, so now it looks like I, made, like I made it maybe an eighth of an inch shorter, but you could you could follow up on that and get it just what you want it to be. Okay, um, so that's 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 how you do it. Um, uh, some of you might say, well gosh, that green's really a little bit ugly. Uh, another possible approach is to use some um, uh, 5080 uh, tubing. It's black. They can get from dancong.com. And uh, you'd have to 
you might have to adjust the dimension slightly. I think the differences there are small enough you, you can get away without doing any adjustment. Uh, but again, remember I said that the rule of 50 use 57% of the total rubber thickness as the target for the slot width. Okay, I hope you got all that and uh, hope you enjoy it. Thanks.